some yellow daffodils and dewdrops from a rose. The spark from a crystal and the warmth from the summer glows. We took a smile from the world, then next some lucky heather. They put them in a moonbeam and mixed them all together. We then reached up to heaven above and took a shining star. Now these all make a person by the name of Frank Lamar. See, see, look at her. Oh, no vulgarity to that, we're being televised. Look at her in white, the bloody liar. How are you? She's flat more grass and wimpers. No vulgarity tonight, it's going to be a very clean. Look here and now. Look here, she's laughing and I've slept with her husband. How are you? It's good to be like, don't talk while I'm on you. Bloody spots on her face, but it's like going to bed with a nettles cake. Hey! Hands up the virgins in my club tonight! Look at her with the legs in the air. Put them down! We're not the biggest nightclub in Manchester, by any stretch of the imagination, but I suppose we are the most successful because of the atmosphere that Fufu Lamar creates. No vulgarity tonight? All <laughs> oh, about the operation. Oh, club click, no dick. No, listen! Manchester Royal Infirmary, Dr. Lobby Top. He said, what do you want to say? I said, just two words, Karakok. Karakok! There's nothing stopping any man from being a drag act. You don't have to have a, um, a special face or a special body to be a drag act. If you've got a wig and makeup and a frock that will fit you no matter what size you are. No vulgarity tonight! It's going to be a very clean show here at Fufu's Palace. I'm the landlady. You're going to have a ball. In fact, the bits of luck you could have too. <laughs> Just be quite honest, you wouldn't have said he was a man. <laughs> you know, if you hadn't have uh, known he was, I wouldn't have thought he was a man. I thought it was a woman with a voice like a bit of gravel. Sandra from the Aquarius Gang. Where's Sandra? On the Aquarius Gang. Give her a nice big hand ribbon on stage. Where is she? Come on. She's When they first arrive, of course, they look as though they've all get off the school bus and, and, and they're all very polite, nice, happy looking ladies. And by the time they go out, they look like as though they've been dragged through a hedge backwards. Oh, take your coat off, don't they, man? I don't know. She's mad about showing her tits. Come here. Bloody hell, they're only like two fried eggs, anyway. Don't worry, I'll lend you a pair of mine. Don't you be laughing at my rubber tits, but I've got a Rolls Royce. Ah. If I thought my next step to get international would be to walk into Granada or BBC with no clothes on at all, just wearing diamonds on my nipples, and stand there singing Vera Limbs, Come Home, You Soldier Boys, I would do it. No problems. Because to get anywhere, to do anything, you've got to do it better than the last man or woman did it. You've got to do it so people will notice you, like I did with the club. Hello, Fufus. Stag do. June the 21st. Hands is it far? It's three pound a head. Would you want to book it for 15? I get the works parties from Littlewoods Pools, from the Biscuit Works, from the Tram Works. From... So they've all got a mix in my place, whether you've got a mink on or you've got a shawl. How many times is it for them? It's 23, we want four more people to come. Yeah, I can, I can swap the seats around. It, it will be a little bit more squashed than with 23. Okay. You'll have to put the slim ones on the back <laughs> so that the rest can fit in. My club is, is segregated nightly into various aspects of, of, uh, of the public. In other words, Wednesday's licensees and all the, and all the husbands on their nights are big handbags, fur coats, handbags full of threat me bitch, you know, all that bit. And uh, big brooches and the hats and the eyelashes. And then Thursday is the start of the uh, courting couples, the 21st of the parties. Friday is definitely hen parties. Then Saturday is complete contrast. I have mums, dads, the old folk, the courting couples, etc. So, you know, I get every walk of, of, of um, the community, really. Next Friday, love. It's fully booked at the moment, I'm afraid, love. Um, actually, I have got... I might have a five. If you're prepared to squash up, I could get a six. Yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you're prepared to squeeze up, it is possible to get six on the table. The club itself opens at 8 o'clock and we finish about quarter past two. There's three hours of disco and three hours of cabaret. 
you can get chicken in the basket and this sort of thing on the night. And how long have you been in this line of work? Oh, ten years now. So you're quite experienced in it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you been in here socially? No, I've not. No. Well, it's, if you like, slightly different than anywhere else, mm. uh, in that we don't have any trouble because we don't allow it in at the door. Mm, yeah. uh, what we basically need is, is control and diplomacy more yeah, than anything else. Yeah. Um, because of the atmosphere of the place, you know, they tend to get a little bit over-enthusiastic sometimes mm. and want to stand on the chairs and sing yeah. and all this business. And it's just basically a matter of controlling them and keeping the gangways clear and, and making sure generally that everybody's quite safe and all right, really. Yeah. You know. um, it's probably, of, of all the nightclubs in the town, it's probably the easiest to work because of the fact that we do very strictly control who we let in and who we don't let in. Yeah. And we tend to keep it very much a higher proportion of women and a few men yeah. because then they're too busy, you know, standing around looking at the women to want to, uh, uh, yeah. to be fighting yeah. or doing anything else. The reason that my audiences are 95%, 90% women, because of the sparkle, the sequins and feathers, and, and that's why. It's not particularly because of the humour, it's, it's the actual glamour, like Liberace with his waterfalls, and it's the ultra splash. I mean, that never lets me out at night, but it keeps me under lock and key. And mine's solitary. Yes, your mind's, mind's going off on a salt, love. <laughs> it's all right. Next, next, next week when he's still going on about it, I'll be sat smiling at you and thinking we're a good time. Rolling <laughs> husband knew him personally before he were foo He used to go in his house. Rolling husband. I hope she's remembered. That's it. We're not having your own call. Her husband knows his own proper name. Frank Pearson. Frank he used to work at the co-op in Bakery <laughs> with my mother-in-law and Yeah, but Ryan knew him, didn't he? Yeah, well, he used to go to their house. One love, 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 one
one day you're going to be a star. Then when you get there, you glitter like one, you see. If I stood outside my club now, they could see me in Morecambe. Um, I have a hairdresser called Barry. Um, he doesn't do his wife's half as good as he does mine, of course. But I have, as you can see, 18, 20 wigs. And they are real hair wigs, so I can send them to him. He knows the size of my head. I'm such a small girl, you see, as you can notice. And he just does them to the styles, that, the various styles every week. So I alter every week. In other words, the lovely face is the same, but the hair always alters. Right, oh. two o'clock for you, darling. All right. Are you dropping us all off home, aren't you? Yes, I'll drop you off last. Yeah. Oh. Hey! <laughs> You're late. <laughs> How are you, darling? All right. Is it raining? Yeah. Oh. And have you got your best frock on? Are you ready for me tonight? Yeah. Promise I won't show you. Have you come to? Have you come with a party? Yeah. yeah. Look at her with the fishnet gloves on and all. Oh, you're trying to show me up, you. No. The diamond earrings. How are you, lady? Good. I'm ready for you tonight. Let's go and get them wet coats off now. All right. And if your knickers are wet, I'll lend you a pair of mine. I make sure I'm there when the manager's there to open up. I then go in to the club. Yes. We're talking about now seven o'clock. And I take my little list, my board. I stand there like Eamon Andrews in drag, waiting for the parties to arrive. And I take them, each individual party, to the seats. Good evening, girl. Oh, you've got a fella with you. Oh. It's all yours, that's why I've got no chance again. No chance. Well, there you are, you see. They're with the gentleman there. I mean, gentlemen do pay for ladies, Mary. Right. Even though she has got a big handbag. Hello, my darling. How are you, my love? Mm. They are, I've got to kiss any road. More than I've had tonight. Oh, you mind your own business. You're only his wife. <laughs> By this time, of course, oh, yeah, I'm right. weighing up the situation of who's who, sure who's fat, wait. who's thin who's got dyed hair and permed hair, who looks good, who doesn't, who I'm going to have a go at when I get on stage, listening to tidbits of the conversation which they'll never think I'm listening to. Look at her with the new shoes on. How are you, girl? Hello. Hello. All right, my little babe. Hello, Paul. Hello, love. Hello. All right. Yes. Another new coat. I love your brooch. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Come on, darling. All the fur coats. It must be a very posh party, isn't it? Today. It's only a six oh, you don't want me to show you up, do you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, these are all ten side home help. Home, home help. Home help. Do you want one? They look as though they could do with some home help themselves. Oh, that's good. Well, all right. You could home help. You could home help. All right, you can come and see to me. From the door through to the kitchen the DJ, everybody in the premises is controlled by me. I am the star, the manageress, the landlady, the landlord, but everybody is controlled by me. Well, I'm only supposed to stand at the bottom of the stairs and the admission tickets. But like, when the stag parties are coming in and getting out the coaches, putting the ties on or cutting the ties in half and giving the mate a tie to put on, because we, we Dress, we have standard address is smart casual smart clothes. You get quite a lot now though. Like they'll say he's a five and make us a drink and you so, you just go along the optic like that under the cures. There's your drink love. <laughs> Not specific, you know like for the stag nights or they'll say fill this with gin and whiskey. We do get the outrageous hen nights with balloons on the heads and balloons down the back and various, shall we say, tasty messages on the back of, uh, of the back of the, uh, of the dresses and so forth. I mean, we had a party of girls one night that arrived dressed as Indians, which we were just grateful it was fancy dress because we were a little bit worried when they first arrived just what it was. I used to go to, to, to a little man in Berry right a face in the barracks. I could see all the soldiers running in and I was running to be fitted with feathers and they were throwing the rifles about. Uh, Trevor Creswell, and uh, he made it. He's an old theatrical man. He made them for quite some time. Now for the theatre, I've gone to Mark Cantor, who's a London-based man who makes for Shirley Bassey and for Danny LaRue and uh, 
he's a very famous designer and and he's making me uh, all my theatre stuff sequins and very heavy diamantes Zaza Gabor eat your heart out Fufu's arrived well, ladies and gentlemen put your hands together and bring on stage the real star of this show let's hear it for the fabulous The act is a non-scripted, cheeky, over-exaggerated, very pretty woman. Tonight, will you close your legs so you're bringing me on a little bit then, I'm happy. It's good to be a nice night. Is there any men in tonight that's never had sex? Thank you. Him? Hi, son. There's something I like about you. We just can't put my hand on it. Have we any ladies in tonight that are jealous of my rare and priceless body? Don't be laughing, love of me. I'd rather did this, but I'm coming a Rolls Royce. Oh, I love it tonight. Look at her and all. Look here, look. She's the only one the Ripper run away from. Look. How are you, look? Look at her hair and all, like a back home Brillo pad. Look. Very nice. Will you tell this one to sit down? I've seen more fat on a chip. I came off a very, very, very working class family. And uh, so I had to leave school right away. I didn't have any further education. And I started work on the bread vans, first of all, uh, as a delivery boy. And then from there into the cotton mill. And then from the cotton mill into Butterworth's, which is a waste paper reclamation firm. We sort bale and grade waste paper for pulp. And uh, I was the only male among, I think it was 160 females. They used to say things to me like, um, you tassel toss in Tessie. And uh, lots of old sayings that I picked up them days off the women who had clogs and shawls on and things, you know. And I use it in the show today. Show you all you. Some of shilling to have you destroyed. <laughs> Sit down, you've got skit marks on your frock. Ow! Look at the spots on the face and all. And it's like sleeping with a nettles cake. Look! Okay, no. Poor cows had rickets. No vulgarity tonight! No vulgarity is going to be cleaved! Oh, look here and all. Vinegar beer. I decided that I wanted to go in show business, even at Butterworth. I used to take my office suit off and um, at the night time go and do the little pubs and, and Salford clubs and uh, the Labour clubs and Conservative clubs. As a singer come comic, come clown, come... But in there, there was... Because I used to do little sketches. The Mother Riley, the daughter Kitty was... was uh, me, daughter Kitty. Um, you know, various things. I'd use the women in the audience and, and take the scarves off them and, and I used to do sketches which were invented there and then nothing written down look at the three virgins there though never had it doesn't want to not likely to get it but hey you've had nits as well haven't you look at them who's done that to you there who's done that to you the poor cow who's done that to you it's a shame bloody hell no no I'm not meant to know vulgarity tonight and it, look here at the end here, ladies and gentlemen, look, little Joe Nancy there. <laughs> look at the suit and all, it shines like snot on the wall, look there. Well, the drag came when I saw it on telly. Uh, you know, this London scene was doing big and there was these female impersonators dancing on bars and, and then I thought to myself, well, I'd like to do that, but I don't, don't think I'd like to do it like them. I'd like to be different. So I sat down and invented myself, if you like, and... Fufu was born. Well, did you like my first outfit? Thank you. It's just a mere slip of a number. Just feel that, darling. Untouched pussy. <laughs> Lovely. Don't be laughing. There's none at your table. And ladies and gentlemen, would you put your hands together and make... She's not laughing, is she Polish? 
She's lovely, isn't she? Is she from your place as well? Is she? How are you, doll? She's lovely. She's laughing. I could tell you one or two things about her. Tell them about the pictures on Saturday. <laughs> tell them, go on, tell them your dad care. Go on. I'm sat next to her in the pictures on Saturday. She said, you're so full of that. I said, hello, darling. How are you? She said, I'm fed up. She said, I'm going. I said, you just sat down. She said, this fella next to me keeps playing with it. I said, well, take the note. She said, he's using my hand. <laughs> was that? Ah, <laughs> was that? Any Chinese in tonight? Well, I went to the toilet <laughs> and uh, I'm stood behind the door and I'm waiting for him to go up because a girl came in and she, she said, Oh, I'll stand with you, love. I'm not going out because he'll drag you on. And we both stood there behind the toilet door waiting till it's finished. They all run into the toilet and of course who goes on stage shouting such and such a person into your head night and somebody shouts they're in the ladies, well of course that doesn't stop him. Down goes the mic, he runs in the toilet and drags them out no matter what they're doing at the time. We've had one or two embarrassing experiences of that. Somebody's been running out like pulling the skirt down because the poo poo's dived in on them at the last minute, you know. But uh, it's all part of fun, isn't it? It's not the general idea. Now ladies and gentlemen, we've got various nice girls in tonight. And I've got various lovely letters. Listen to this, dear darling Fufu. In your club tonight, you'll have a wonderful virgin. She's getting married on Saturday. Dear darling Fufu, she's dying to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. Not mentioned the bloody name yet. This young lady is game for a laugh. Like she was that game last week, somebody shot her. But anyhow, where's Kay getting married on Saturday? Come on! The bells are ringing! Pardon me, my girl. I get little letters, little notes sent to the DJ. The DJ's uh, instructions are, and these are the words he says over my, if you've anything, you're celebrating anything, birthdays, weddings, funerals, whatever, pass the note to me and I'll see that Fufu gets them. Then I do get them. Then, Mary Bloggins, she's getting married, up to the stage. No matter whether she's pretty, she's dressed beautiful or not, in three minutes, I've tore her to pieces. Get your leg over there! Cease! Who the bloody hell is Mary Earth? Now, why are you, love? Oh, shut up, you. Come here, love. Why are you shy? Come here. Put your leg on me, Titty. Come here. Ah, oh, little baby. Come here. I'm sure I'm going quick. Now, come here, love. This is a white wedding. It's a white wedding, any road. How long have you been with him? About a month. Three years since the white wedding. <laughs> You're married in a pub. Three years? Have you heard that like it? Come here, I want you. Have you ever seen him getting married? Have you got bridesmaids and everything? Have you a posh care, have you? And listen, watch my lips. What, what did you do for a living? Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> Tool fitter. <laughs> Funny enough, people have said to me, do you never get somebody that's took an offence to what you say on? And I haven't, never, because they tend to treat it as, as so outrageous that they can't believe it's happening. I think one of my main assets is the fact that I can deliver my material warm. We have 14 virgins in from the Grand Psalms. And one of them that gave me Tattersall is getting married to a sex maniac. Where is this young virgin of ill repute? Here she is, look at her. Give her a nice big hand on a head party here in Trumpo's Valley. Because half of them don't treat me as a man. I mean, they treat me as a woman on that stage, the women, you know. I mean, they talk to me as a woman, not like they would a man. I get a, I mean, for instance, if I said, uh, of the things that I say to a woman, if you said to them, they slap you in the gob. Seize! <laughs> the hell, they've all been with you. How are you, love? Is it a white wedding, love? It's a white wedding. Is your mum with you? Is his mum with you? Is it, which is his mum? <laughs> oh, bloody hell, I've slept with her, hey! I've been with your father-in-law as well. Come here. What the tell me? Is that your mother-in-law there, love? She looks like now as he can. Oh, are you, love? I don't ever, ever pretend 
on stage or off stage when I'm bringing them in. I don't ever pretend that I am trying to be a woman. I am a very bold man with a frock on. Come on! Come on! Now then, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to change it to something a little more comfortable. I'm going to leave you, ladies and gentlemen, with two people who've got a number one hit record in Siberia. How about putting your hands together, the way we do in Foucault's Palace, because in my palace, the atmosphere is so great, we don't have it anywhere else in Manchester. One hand like this, are you ready? One, two, three, go! Clap your hands! I want that sound a little bit louder! You're in Foucault's Palace! In Fufu's Palace, I hold court every night. You are my subject. You are my beautiful people and you deserve me. And if you hang on long enough, you'll bloody well get me. I love you. Every single one of you. I want you to put your hands together. Don't bring on stage two young people. Ladies and gentlemen, all about putting your hands together. Fabulous duo, all the way tonight by helicopter, ladies and gentlemen. By helicopter, the Moss Side. To be here on Fufu's Palace helicopter, you know the expense I spend on this stage. Bloody helicopter from Marseille. No expense spared for you, you tassel tossing Tessies. Right, ladies and gentlemen, here they are, fabulous people. Come on, meet and greet my own, ladies and gentlemen, Randall up Kirk, deceased. Give them a nice big hand. Come on, bit louder than that. Bit louder than that. The more bloody star. I always go for the glamour, the sequins, the diamonds, the absolute extraordinary dresses, headpieces, whatever. Because that's one of my main winners. In other words, the girls that sit in that audience would love to have that dress on. It's too much for them, they couldn't go anywhere with it, because it's too over exaggerated. But the glamour of it outlays the fact that. Um, you know, it's a man that's wearing it. It's, it's, the atmosphere is lust. L-U-S-T, lust. Because oh, that's all they come here for, is yeah. to knock one another off. Yeah. It's true. I love going shopping, and, and I don't just go shopping for, for an overcoat and a balaclava. I go for my accessories, like I go in Kendall's. I love to sweep in, in my jeans and, and, uh, and my leather coat, right up to the corset department for underwear. I wear... Um, a roll on because um, I have lots of little things to hide you see and I wear various colours for various outfits so uh, I invariably I'll go to the woman and, and say uh, um, have you got this in a size 28 waist and uh, yeah, you can bring it back sir if it doesn't fit the last it's not for a lady it's for me uh, well they're stammered they're stunned they don't know what to and I say to them quite often I said look if, if you could earn as much money out of uh, this as I'm going to do you wouldn't be shy, shy of shopping neither. Yes, I can wear with it. Same with the shoes. I go into shoes and sit there and try a woman's pair of high heels on and ask for the silk stocking to put on because I can't try them on with my own socks. I go down into Bootsies for my makeup and all the girls know me. What shade, if there's any new eyelashes and any new colours. There they are, the lovely Fufu will get them and they save them for me. All the samples for me to try out. Lewis is there again. Sometimes to buy maybe the odd pair of underpants as a man but mainly women's knickers. And it's straight on in the show again, so come on, put your hands together once again and bring on stage the fabulous Bimbola Man! Before we bring the men on, ladies and gentlemen, before we bring the men on, do you want the trousers on or off? I said, do you want their trousers down or off? And so you bloody shout. We've got a young man in tonight, ladies and gentlemen, that's celebrating also with a charming young pack of men. 
celebrating his stag night. That means he's getting married this coming Saturday. They've told me, ladies and gentlemen, he's a full of gentlemen. Where is Mr. Lee Clark? Oh, Come on! If you get people running up to you and, and, and they say, now don't get me on stage whatever you do. My name's such and such a person and I'm 21 and uh, I'm with the party from so forth and I've walked in, but don't get me up on stage. You know, it's sort of half fearing getting up on stage, but not wanting to miss out on the fact that they are taking up on stage. And they give a great performance about being dragged from the back of a room by half their friends and, and so forth. And especially the fellows, of course, because they don't know what's going to hit them more than anybody else. It's a kind of a fear that, that they don't know what's going to happen to them, but at the same time it's a fear. It's a bit like going to a horror movie, they don't want to miss out on it. Very nice. Now be quiet. Now be quiet while I ask him. Is it a white wedding, young man? Are you marrying her there with a snotty nose? <laughs> uh, with the... You're not marrying your must be. Are you marrying her? <laughs> so you know, I thought you fucking should be blind. No. <laughs> well, isn't that lovely to have you both together? Tell me, sir. Tell me. You're the barman then, are you? It's a you do It's a soldier! Who is in the army? <laughs> This is the army, Mr. John. <laughs> no, I'm if you don't tell them that. <laughs> you find your breakfast in bed before. You're not getting there anymore. Oh, this is the army. See? Oh, tell me you're in the artillery. Yeah! Oh, I'm dying to see his cannon. <laughs> oh, the little devil. And tell me, darling, tell me where you stationed at. You're in Germany. Oh, oh my father had four of them on one day, mate. Listen, <laughs> shut up. Have you ever heard of the dance of the ruptured cucumber? <laughs> Would you like to see him do it tonight? <laughs> Would you like to see his little purple crew in set? <laughs> Bloody hell, his wife's fainted. I think it's <laughs> fair to say that I see myself as myself, as Frank Pearson. I don't think I've ever tried to portray a Danny LaRue. And I think the nearest one to me is Dick Emery. Though it was scripted, he, he didn't try just to be a drag act. He was a character. And he portrayed characters. That's what I do. I have created Fufu, but I don't particularly let Fufu take over. I mean, for instance, Many nights, when I, when I go to the club, sometimes I don't feel like putting Fufu on. But I've got to do, because they want it. I could, just couldn't go out there and be frank, even though they'd, I could entertain them, and they would they want the outrageousness. And I can't be outrageous until I, I'm Fufu. Are you ready for the dance with the ruptured cucumber? Yeah! Am I going to do it with our royal artillery friends? Yeah! Tonight will be a colonel. Stand over there, sir. Put your arms around Fufu, sir. Now get close to me, sir. Now, sir, we're going to walk across the floor starting with this leg. During my song, I'll shout you two words only. Leg over. You'll know what to do. Because when we get down there, we're changing places and I'm bloody well. Are you ready? Just me. I've got four brothers, each and every one of them deplored the fact that their brother, who once used to fight for the school, swim for the school, ends up in a frock. Now then, when Fufu was recognised, and when instead of having a Ford Popular, I had a Jaguar, and when instead of having the little two up two down, we had a bungalow. And when, instead of having jeans on, I had a silk suit on, the family then accepted that Fufu was an invention, and a very successful invention. And now, I think it's fair to say that they're very proud of me. But there was doubt. And I think the only doubt there was is that because of the frock. There'll always be an England
your name? Gee, what a nice voice. Gee, what a dame. With hair of gold and eyes of blue. Foo-foo Lamar, the world loves you. Frank Lamar, so tall and dark, who sends out love with certain spark, who makes us laugh and sometimes cry when it's time to say goodbye. With heartfelt thanks and all the rest, we'll say goodbye, good night, and God bless. What did you do wrong? He got up. He said he's getting married, yes, yeah, getting the bottle of champagne, and that's it. Right? I know he said he would get a strip or something. Well, I'll tell you what, I wish I'd have done that on my bloody head night anyway. I'm not going to be any of it. Hey, don't forget Nardin, will you? Well, let me say bye bye. Bye bye, everybody. I'm Gaynor, and bye, Fred, bye, Mum, bye, Maureen, bye, Joe, bye, Phyllis. And I don't mean you, Phyllis, because I hate you, real. Bye, everybody. Bye, Gaynor. Bye, Gaynor. Bye, Gaynor. Bye, Gaynor. Bye, G